My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the Our New Testament text is the continuation of the story we've been reading over the last several weeks. Um, during Advent, we've been reading the same two stories, just different pieces each week. The first story is out of Samuel, and it's about Hannah. And then the other story is about Elizabeth and Mary. And so we are now at the place where they meet up. And so we're in chapter one verses 39 through 45. Let us listen to the word of the Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The word of the Lord. One of the great gifts in in life is that there are certain things that we can always depend on. Any of you feel that way, that there's there's just, it's really nice, right? Well, one of the things that I have come to depend on is that the Detroit Lions um, (laughs) have an amazing way of losing games that they should win. That, and, and so far this season, they have lost three games on the final play of the game. And so, this past week, I was feeling good that I knew somehow they were going to find a way to lose. So at the very end, with about two minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, they were up. They had the ball. Now, it was, it was fourth and one, and you would think, what is the smart thing to do? Smart thing is you punt to the far end and you force the other team to come and win. But no, no, (laughs) not the Lions. They choose to try and make the first down. And of course, the quarterback drops back, gets sacked, fumbles the ball, and it goes even closer to the end zone. Whereupon, the other team scores. And I'm like, yes. (laughs) I can count on this. But then, a Christmas miracle. (laughs) The quarterback drives the Lions all the way down the field, and then with seven seconds left, drops back. He's not sacked, and he throws a strike to a lion (laughs) in the end zone. And, And what happened then? I don't know. if if you all saw what happened in that moment, was an explosion of joy. (laughs) An utter and complete explosion of joy. Grown men (laughs) were running around the field and one guy had his hand up like this (laughs) and, and you would have thought that if you had just sort of dropped in from outer space, you would have thought that we're number one. (laughs) But no, it was, we won one. (laughs) But, But see, that, my friends, that, my friends, is what joy is. Joy is not happiness. Happiness is this sort of constant condition in in which things seem to be going okay, in which we feel good about ourselves and what's happening in the world. I mean, that's sort of happiness. Joy is that moment of transcendent delight. That moment we're not expecting or anticipating. And something happens. And suddenly, we are just filled with with this joy, this delight. Now, the thing is, children get this, right? I mean, children have this ability to find delight in so many things. Our, our, our son and daughter-in-law sent us, uh, see if I, if I were a good grandfather, I'd be showing you, but um, this great short video of, of our grandson, probably eight months old in the tub, just splashing, and he, you know, you just, and, and there's this look of sheer joy on his face, especially when the rubber ducky shows up and he tries to sink it. You know, I mean, as children, joy is, is always around. But as we grow older and more mature, joy seems to fade away. We're we're serious about life and, and we see the difficulties in life. We see the terrible things that happen 
in the world. We see homelessness and hunger. We see what happened at Oxford. We watch the news channels as they dig for people throughout the South and Midwest following the tornadoes. And, and, and all of that weighs on us. And we lose people we love. And somehow we just lose that ability to find joy. But, but if we read the scriptures, joy is supposed to be a gift from God. That in fact, it's one of the fruits of the Spirit. That if the Spirit of God is within us, the Apostle Paul says, we are supposed to find joy. And Paul could find it even though when he was in prison and shipwrecked, Paul, Paul somehow did it. He found joy. And so the question is, if our joy quotients are low, how can we find that joy? Well, what I want to offer to you this morning is that both of our stories show us how we can find joy. And because joy can be found in, in two places. There can be joy of giving or giving joy, and then there is receiving joy. And so I want to begin with giving joy, and, and this is Hannah's story. Now, I, I know many of you are, are not at all familiar with Hannah's story, so, so quickly we'll, we'll do a, a, a recap. So Hannah is married to Elkanah, and, and Hannah has a sister wife, and the sister wife has lots of kids, and Hannah has none. She cannot get pregnant. And so, one year when they go up to the, to the temple, to the tent at Shiloh, she prays to God that if God will give her a child, she will give this child back to God forever to serve the Lord. And so, she becomes pregnant. She gives birth. She nurses the child. She weans the child. And then when that happens, she goes back to Shiloh and she gives the child over to God. Now, chances are none of you think that that would be a moment for joy. Here, here is this child that, that Hannah has desired, wanted, prayed for, and she finally gets the child, and she, she's now giving, giving him up to God. But it is a moment of joy. And I say that for two reasons. The first is because she's planning a barbecue. And what I mean by that is when she brings a three-year-old bull up to be sacrificed, in, in, in that day and time, sacrificing a bull didn't mean you burned it all up. You brought it as a celebration of what God has done for you. The bull is, is taken apart and it is cooked and, and everybody eats and you have this tremendous party. She is celebrating the fact that God has given her this child. Not just that, but she is celebrating the fact that she gets to give back to God the most precious thing she has. Out of gratitude. And I say it's a moment of joy as well because next week we'll look at what happens in chapter 2. But she sings this song. Listen to just the first couple of verses. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. This is joy. Because she gets to give to God everything. Everything. That's joy. And that is the joy that comes in giving and then there is the joy in receiving. And that's what happens in this Elizabeth and Mary story this morning. So Elizabeth and Mary are cousins. Mary has 
Elizabeth, like Hannah, has desperately wanted a child all her life, hasn't been able to get pregnant, finally does. And so, in, in some ways, she's kind of hiding out, almost <laughs> not sure what to make of getting pregnant in her old age. And Mary comes to her, and you think about Mary here as an unmarried, unwed woman who is now pregnant. And so she goes to visit Elizabeth, and the instant Mary calls out to Elizabeth to say, here I am, that the child in Elizabeth's womb, as, as Elizabeth puts it, leaps for joy. And Elizabeth is filled with joy. How is it, she says, that the mother of my Lord comes to visit me? And, and what we need to understand is that for more than 400 years, the Jewish community had been praying for a liberator, for a Messiah, for the one who would come. And he didn't come, and he didn't come. And finally, here he is. And for Elizabeth, the joy is that even in utero, the Messiah has come to see her. She's overwhelmed with joy. It fills her. See, my friends, th this is where joy can be found. It can be found in giving and, and in receiving. And, and so, uh, here's what I want you to do. And, and, and I'm going to show you that you can find joy. I want you to close your eyes. Don't go to sleep. Just <laughs> close your eyes. And I want you to think about the last time you gave something unexpected to someone. That you gave something to someone that you knew was going to cause them to smile, to feel good about themselves. Maybe it was a gift to the angel tree. Maybe it was a compliment to someone at the grocery store. Maybe it was an unexpected hug to someone you haven't seen in forever. Think, think about that moment and then, and then just let, let yourself feel the joy, the joy of that giving, the joy of being a tutor at Alcott or giving something to Fort Street or just, it's not pride. It's joy that you've been given the gifts that you can give away. That God has blessed you in such a way that you can give something to someone else. Just let that, let that joy just well up. Let it well up inside you. And now think about a moment when someone has done that for you. When, when you have maybe seen a, just a gorgeous sunset or a sunrise, in the middle of the winter you have heard the birds, someone has smiled at you, complimented you. Someone has given you the gift of their time. And just feel the joy of, of being loved by, by God and by others. Just feel that joy. Let it well up inside you. Okay. See, it's there. It's there. Joy is coming to you. Opportunities to give joy are present for you. And so the challenge for us is just to be open. To be open to those moments that even in these really tough times, we can let the joy of God fill us and fill others. And so that's my challenge to you. My challenge to you for this week is to be open. Open to joy and experience it and let it change you. Let us pray. Loving God, it is such a gift to be able to give and receive joy. Help us to be open. 
every moment, every day, that we might experience the gift you give us. In Christ's name, amen.